Let's begin by looking at a water wave. When a wave passes by, it has peaks and troughs. The amplitude is the distance from the calm water level to the peak of the wave. It's a measure of how much energy the wave carries. The higher the amplitude, the more energy it has. Now let's follow a single water molecule as the wave passes. Even though the wave energy moves towards the shore, the water molecule doesn't travel with it. Instead, it moves up and down, oscillating in place. So while the wave moves forward, the water itself just jiggles. To visualize this, we can draw a graph showing the displacement of the water molecule against time. This wave-like pattern lets us measure the amplitude and something called the time period. That's the time it takes for one full up and down movement or one complete oscillation. From the time period we can calculate the frequency using this formula. Frequency is 1 divided by time period, where f is the frequency in hertz and t is the time period in seconds. Frequency tells us how many oscillations happen per second. So if a wave has a time period of 0.5 seconds, it has a frequency of 2 Hz, meaning 2 vibrations per second. Now let's change our perspective. If we look at the wave from the side and plot displacement against distance, we can see the wavelength. That's the distance from one peak to the next. It tells us how long the wave is. Wavelength has the symbol lambda and is measured in meters. We can now use the wave speed formula. Speed is frequency times wavelength, where speed is in meters per second, frequency is in hertz and wavelength is in meters. Let's also check the units. Hertz is 1 over second and when multiplied by meters we get meters per second. Perfect. Let's now view the wave from top down. What we see are wave fronts, lines representing all the points that are in phase, like the tops of waves. These help us understand the direction the wave is traveling. This for example shows how waves are bent as they pass through an opening. This is called diffraction. Waves like water waves, light waves and electromagnetic waves are transverse. That means the vibrations are perpendicular to the direction the energy is moving. Imagine a rope being flicked. The rope moves up and down, but the wave travels forwards. But not all waves are transverse. Sound waves are longitudinal. This means the particles vibrate in the same direction as the wave is moving. We see areas of compression and areas of rarefaction. That's how sound travels through air. Although we often draw sound waves as transverse for clarity, remember sound is a pressure wave, so in reality it's always longitudinal. Let's try a quick IGCSE exam style question. A wave travels with a speed of 340 meters per second and has a frequency of 170 hertz. Calculate its wavelength. Pause the video and give it a try. We use the formula speed is frequency times wavelength to rearrange it as wavelength is speed divided by frequency. Now we substitute. 340 divided by 170 is 2 meters. So the answer is the wavelength is 2 meters. Now you understand how waves behave how to calculate their speed, frequency and more, and even the difference between transverse and longitudinal waves. If you want to learn more, check out our other videos and visit our website for full IGCSE physics and chemistry learning resources. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell to never miss another IGCSE tip from The Learning Curve. See you next time!